This is the House of Hockey podcast, where we talk about the game and the lifestyle. We've got opinions as hockey fans, friends, and from the female perspective. Welcome to our house. Welcome to the House of Hockey podcast. This is episode 176. I'm one of your hosts, Ray Ray. Our other co-host, Breezy, is still on the long-term injured reserve. I did talk to her. She is doing well. She's very busy. She's got a lot happening right now. Um, So we will uh, touch base with her again soon and get her back in the in the saddle but in the meantime i am thrilled to have alma back alma laura she's back as my guest co-host this week she is our friend and excellent uh correspondent for the house of hockey podcast (laughs) so thanks alma no thank you for having me i had so much fun last week so when you asked me to be on again i was like of course (laughs) oh yeah she's got uh, a chicken nugget behind her pillow it also kind of looked like (laughs) a tater top but i couldn't tell at first and it's (laughs) phenomenal she is just so authentically her and i love hearing your thoughts we have so much to discuss quick little overview well, when we ended recording last week, Lindy Ruff got fired and we had talked about that. Um, and I was like, I texted you. I'm like, can you believe it? They fired him. Like, it was like minutes after we finished. So that was super crazy. Um, but that happened. And then, of course, we're going to talk all things trade deadline and um, see how we feel about some of the te- the teams and the moves they made, um, along with some of the weirder moves and some of the weird things that happen on trade deadline, um, along with my first PWHL game experience. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can't wait um, to hear about that. <laughs> oh, my God. Lots to talk about with that, of course. Um, so I went to Boston for that to watch the New York game on Sunday and lots of other PWHL news and then some super fun uh, shoe collaborations with teams and hat tricks and a lot going on. So let's start with trade deadline. Everybody's least favorite Alma just made the best face if you're not watching <laughs> on the video. The Vegas Golden Knights were pretty controversial and had a lot of people upset about all of the moves that they made because they acquired some pretty heavy price tags and players in Tomas Hurdle. Thomas Hurdle, how do we say his name? Tomas. Tomas, that's what I thought. Okay, Noah Hannafin <laughs> and Anthony Mantha, um, big time, big time players. And the controversy, of course, is because Mark Stone is on long term injured reserve, the salary cap situation shifts. And so, therefore, they are allowed to acquire some bigger salary caps. Uh, everybody hates this. They think it's unfair. They think Vegas Golden Knights are cheaters. I think they're just following the rules, but I think Alma has some different opinions. Look, I oh, I was just fine. They had acquired who they needed to. I think, um, what was it? Tomas Hurdle came within like minutes of the deadline. Mm-hmm. So that one was just like, really, you guys really had to get better. And I get it. I'll, I'll play devil's advocate here. So as an LA Kings fan, of course, you don't like it because they're in our division. We're most likely going to see them. I mean, we got to get into the playoffs first. Season's not over. But <laughs> if we make it, we're going to have to face them at some point in the in the playoffs. So, of course, you don't want your division to get better. But what came to me as a shock is Tomas Hurdle got a big extension with the Sharks. So I know a lot of Sharks fans. So that's a player you think is going to retire with your team. They have a long contract. That's probably the player a lot of people got their new jerseys from because it's like, oh, hey, he's here. We got him locked for X amount of years. So to see that one, I was like, you got to be freaking kidding me. To our our division rival, of course, you're going to want to screw us. But I don't know. I mean, I get it. They're following the rules. But it's like something I was thinking about when you gave me um, the list of stuff we were going to talk about is, Fine. Yes, Vegas is following the rules. They're, you know, they're giving up top picks for to get these names. But something that came to mind is like, I don't feel like the league is gonna 
change the rules or is going to penalize Vegas or is going to do anything to be like, you know what, Vegas, you can't do this moving forward because Mm -hmm. it's making the NHL money. If you guys have never been to Vegas for Mm -hmm. a game, let alone a playoff series or a Stanley Cup final, like I've been in Vegas around that time and it is just a party on the strip, off the strip, heading to the arena. So I was thinking about it and I was like, we're dumb to think like the NHL is going to be like, you know what, Vegas, shame on you. You cannot do that anymore because without Vegas in the playoffs, it's, there's no, there's not, there's no more money. Not that there's no more money, but I feel like they generate just so much um, money and traction for the NHL. They're not going to want to do anything about it. And with Tomas Hurdle, I was just like, it sucks because you know he's a great player and I know he's been hurt a lot of the season um so that's somebody you don't want to see leave to Vegas but to be able to be the Sharks and get rid of a big contract like that and be able to move a contract like that because they're that's one of the cool. teams that in the past went all in what was it their last um a playoff run in 2019 they went all in mm-hmm. to try to make it far in the playoffs and yeah you got to a conference final but you the repercussions of that was they weren't able to sign Pavelski anymore a lot of you know th- that they gave away these big contracts that kept them from re-signing Timo a lot of other players so they're rebuilding so to be able to get rid of that contract and only retain what like a certain percentage like as low as like 15 percent of a contract that's great for the sharks but it's like really vegas you just got that much better as if you needed these assets to get even better like that's what i'm really really ticked off about because (laughs) i feel like everybody within my division everybody within our you know my conference got better or Mm -hmm. they went out during the trade deadline and made these moves to made their team contenders and I'm not to say that my team's not contending obviously you see all these big moves being made and then you go look at the Kings and it's like well they didn't do anything and Mm -hmm. everybody's everybody all creators who were um you know narrowing down the trades they named my team the losers of the trade deadline because they did nothing and it sucks I mean we'll see what happens but it just Oh, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I really <can> hope <laughs> I really hope that they did all this for a first round exit. Like I will not shut up about it if that happens. I will be like, haha, all that and you got booted out in the first, but I will only be vocal if we make it past the first. So I hope that that's what ends up happening. <laughs> Well, in Vegas's defense, they did say that Mark Stone's injury was way more significant than the injury last year um, and that it doesn't look like he will be returning for the playoffs. Of course, anything can happen. So we'll we'll go with that as, as you <laughs> eye roll. Like, yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> um, they're defending Stanley Cup champions. They have all the pieces to do it again, potentially. Um, and so they're going for it. You can't fault them for, for really going hard and Mm -hmm. doing what they can. I, I wish there was a different rule in place though, for if stone does become healthy again, like what is the consequence then with the salary cap? Like, like there needs to be more parameters involved in like how those contracts and stuff go, because then there is an unfair advantage, right? Like, then you've got this stacked team all of a sudden, and then you just put some, you know, fourth liner down and move people around. And I mean, kudos to them for figuring it out though. And also Mm -hmm. like, that's not everything. Like, it's not just, yes, you could argue that like, they're like turning into the Yankees of baseball where they've got, (laughs) they're just paying for the top talent and here we are. and, And that's what they're doing. But also like, I don't think in hockey that that totally applies. I think there are so much other things that are involved. It is such a team sport that like, I don't, and I, and I just don't know that it's all that you can't just blame them Mm -hmm. for winning because they have top 
like paid athletes and some of the top performers. It's so much more than that in hockey, as we've seen, because we've seen other teams win Stanley Cups without having all of that. So like, I feel like that's a little bit of a cop out of an argument that people make. And, you know, like you said, we don't know what's going to happen in the first round. You've got teams who've had the best records and they get eliminated in the first round. So it's like, that's the same thing. What does it matter if they're paid the most? I don't think being paid the most equal equates necessarily the best talent always in this particular league due to the way the salary cap is structured. So uh, see, like, I, I, I think they were very successful last year because if you really think about it, um, it was a different man every single game. It wasn't just, you know, cause sometimes you do get these playoff runs where it's like, um, you know, one, one guy seems like he's the one that's carrying the team as mm -hmm. far as like scoring all the goals. And I feel like Vegas was so successful um, last year because it was a different man every game. Like you said, it's a right. team sport. So you had everybody um, scoring, scoring goals, different right. guys, everybody played their part into the success of, of them. So I see it and I'm just being salty because they're in my division. And like I said, to make it far, we're probably going to have to face them. But um, it's just playoffs are a whole new game. Like mm -hmm. you said, you can be the top contender and get booted out in the first or it's just the, I also say it, you know, it's also about who gets hot at the right time. If you yeah. get hot towards the end of the season, a lot of the times that momentum carries on into the playoffs. Sometimes if you're not doing very well and you're struggling towards the end, it carries on into that. So it's all it's all a wait and see type of thing like I said for me best case scenario is it doesn't work out for them and <laughs> for for my team I ha I'm a firm believer and I'm always that positive person and I was yes. telling um I was telling one of our friends like I have a feeling the Kings aren't going to do anything I have a feeling they're mm -hmm. playing the you know what we're not going to blow up our farm mm -hmm. system just to get these rental players um let's just let's just go ahead and do what we have to do it's got to be the next man up if a guy gets hurt that's why we have talent you know in the minors we're gonna bring them up and we'll see where it goes and that's where I think yeah. my team is so would I have liked For them sure. to get somebody of course I think they were in talks of getting um Boston's goalie or rumor has it that they were in talks of getting him he waived his mm -hmm. no trade clause and that did it that kept us from it but I'm just gonna say we'll see where it goes for my team too <laughs> yes I think the Kings have a very different strategy of what they do and I I appreciate them not necessarily making a just a move to make a move to get further into the playoffs they have a very strategic farm system like you said full of a lot of talent and they've they're over the years they have progressed steadily and they're doing the right things and i don't always believe in this like just go get whoever you can at the deadline to try to make it further unless of course you really do have a chance to go far in the playoffs or you really need that extra piece to get you into the playoffs then you have to make that crazy trade deadline move and like make it happen which the vegas golden knights did like mm -hmm. they're going all in they're this is their time these are their years they are not messing around they're going to do whatever they have to and you can't like that that's where they're at though the kings are not there neither are the blackhawks mm -hmm. the black of course the blackhawks didn't make any move mm -hmm. like that was the right move. We're not doing that. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> not what we're doing right now. You know, Yeah. we got 25 players on the injured list. We got a farm system that who knows what's going to happen. You know, Connor Bedard's just figuring his stuff out. Like, no, we're not going to do that unless, right. Like, unless there's some really key player that they want for the future, the long-term future, not for a playoff. And that's very rare to come by in this, deadline situation i think it depends of course on their contract and the availability but like yeah like you know. i'm proud of my team that they're not rushing the young guys to just you know yeah. push them out there like we've said before and we've you know we've touched before a lot of these younger players they're so rushed up into the in that nhl level that when they're not you know putting up points like connor mm -hmm. mcdavid or um you know austin matthews or connor bedard that every they're looked upon as oh they're being a bust and it's like a lot of players yeah. take a little bit longer to um to develop so i'm just happy like my organization's not in any rush to rush these guys up and 
you're paying these guys money for a reason. They're players for a reason. We, they're human as well. They go through slumps. And I have a feeling like, yeah, we struggle here and there. But I have no doubt, like, are we playoff contenders? Yeah, but we. I'm just glad with our – I'm okay with not doing anything at the deadline. Well, yeah, and you got a new coach. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know – there's a lot <laughs> happening in your locker room. And like, that was the right move not to do anything drastic and to look at the long term picture. So, you know, I support that because the other thing that was brought up this week during deadline is like trading for first round picks. And like, mm -hmm. I have a really hard time with teams making their whole decisions about rebuilding and restructuring about getting first round picks. I think you are only betting on who that potential of who that player's potential could be. Like you're, you're paying for potential. You're not paying for guaranteed talent. I would mm -hmm. much rather spend money on a player who's just finished his first round contract and doesn't maybe want to stay where he was drafted to and he's proven and you can develop him and work with him and build a career for your team around that like I understand I can say that like yes we've got Connor Bedard but we're in the position now where we're building our entire team around one player and his potential and like that's kind of scary that's a lot of money and pressure to put on one person. Like, yes, he's very good. But also, like, we I don't want a Connor McDavid situation where the whole team is relying on him. And Edmonton Oiler people will tell me that that's not the case. But, like, the guy doesn't have a Stanley Cup. And, like, he's wicked talented and totally deserves it. But, like, I don't know that they have built enough around that as a whole team where you've got every guy on every line scoring goals. So sorry, I've gone a little sidetrack here, no. but so getting the first round pick is important in certain situations. I don't think it's the end all be all, especially at the trade deadline. It all depends on what your team is trying to do. And like, I just think that's like, that's like dating a guy or a girl because, and like staying with them for longer because of their potential. <laughs> Like, oh, but he has so much potential. Like, he's got all these dreams. And, like, I see his potential to be a better guy. And, like, he's really going to do the dishes for me tonight. Like, that's <laughs> not, like those people you just want to shake. And you're like, that's not, that's never going to happen. <laughs> and, like, you've got to break up with him. So, like, that's how I perceive it and in, in my brain. But, I mean, it, it again, it all depends on where your team is at and what they're trying to do. So I, I, I like to put a little less pressure on that first round pick, especially mm -hmm. a trade deadline. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And now, and now I feel like everybody, I mean, it's hit or miss. Sometimes you do get the number, you know, your number one or two picks and then it doesn't end up working out. Like you said, it's a gamble. Right. It's a gamble. These teams are, obviously willing to take and it's like oh my gosh there's so much talent I'll give my money to somebody that's guaranteed that's gonna guarantee me mm -hmm. you know years point something whereas you you said it picks yeah. aren't always gonna result in what you want but that's why I'm not a GM Alma and I'm just not listening <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm a guest on the on the podcast because people are probably like, oh my gosh, she's okay with us not doing anything. And now she's over here and she doesn't want picks. So I get it. <laughs> no. If they listen to the context in which we are discussing, they will hear our opinion and understand. Because look at like so the the New York Islanders, Lou Lamorello hasn't made a trade, hasn't made a deadline day deal in four years. I'm sure some people hate him and his style of managing, of course, like he's got a very specific style and we've seen it and there's a lot of pros and cons to it, but they've got a new coach, Patrick mm -hmm. Waugh, they're, they've got a core, they've added some pieces, making a trade deadline move for them right now, that would not be a good idea at this moment in time. Like you got to see where this is going to play out and let your coach 
figure out where the players are at. And that's way too soon to try to add a piece, in my opinion. So I support that decision. I'm sure some people are so mad that he doesn't even engage. But unless, like, he's got other issues, though. So maybe that wasn't a great example. (laughs) But, like, (laughs) there's that. Um, Edmonton's acquired a bunch of players, which hopefully can add the pieces that they need to make a really substantial uh, push in the playoffs. Uh, the Lightning added Dumba and Duclair. The Panthers added Vladimir Tarasenko and Kyle Ocposo, which I thought were great moves. Keeping up with the Toffolis, we have to keep up with the Toffolis. <laughs> Tyler Toffoli is yet on another team. He is playing for the Winnipeg Jets. Um, they acquired two other players. Uh, the other, do you feel? How do you feel about the Toffoli move? Uh, I mean, good for the Jets. I feel like they're. I mean, they're in playoff contention. I feel like that's been a surprise um, for everybody that they're doing so well. And um, his wife posted a picture of Toffoli and Alex Ayafalo. And I was like, oh, just stab me in the heart. Why don't you? Like (laughs) ex-Kings right there, really. Um, But once we, we we didn't get him, I know going into the deadline, we were still the top runners to Mm -hmm. go ahead and get him. I don't know what the asking price was Mm -hmm. from us. Um, Jersey fans are really pissed off because they feel like he essentially went for nothing. Um, but I'm like, poor, poor Toffoli. And I know this is, I am, we're all about the girls here. And I'm like, I cannot imagine what his poor wife is going through having to pack up and go away again. Like Like, that's so sad. Like coast, coast, he was in the Canadians, right? Wasn't he a Canadian too? Yeah, he went from the Kings to Vancouver to the Canadians to Calgary to Jersey and now back to Winnipeg. I am like, oh my gosh, bless her. I love her, but I yeah. cannot imagine what that does to somebody. And I just, I wish him well. Like, I don't, yeah. there's no ill feelings like towards the Jets. I know a lot of, uh, what is it, Kings fans because of the PLD trade and all that going about. I'm not about that. I really, I wish them the best. All of mm-hmm. course, if they play us, you know we we gotta win. But I'm just like, if it wasn't us, you know, at least let them get a let them get a shot at the playoffs because it doesn't look like Jersey's gonna get there. <laughs> no. no, I mean he's he's really proven to be like a very valuable player. Um, he can really adapt to teams, and I think that is something that I would pay money for. Right, like a player who can just adapt to any system and jump right in because that's the other element of this stupid trade deadline crap that we do for the drama of the sport and for (laughs) us fans and to like keep us engaged and entertained is like, you don't know how they're going to mesh. How many times Mm -hmm. have we heard coaches say that like, you don't know how a new player at this point is going to be able to adapt to a system and be able to, perform and do all the things they were doing with the other team they were with for X amount of years. I think the whole thing is it's craziness. And I, I just, I don't know how I feel about it in general. Um, Who else? Carolina, they got the big name. I feel like of, of the rumors that were building in Jake Gensel um, who left the penguins. And I know penguins fans are sweating in their boots because if Gensel goes and there was, you know, their core is not what it used to be. And I, I don't know when the Penguins finally go. It's time to make some big changes. I don't know what that looks like. What do you think? Well, I feel like they tried um, to get somewhat of assets in the off season because they had Eric Carlson. Um, right. But I just feel like, I don't want to say, because uh, I'm getting up there in age, but <laughs> it's it's a lot of older guys. And yes. as we're moving forward and you see the teams are getting younger and not older, or you have the young guys meshing with the older guys, a good, a good mixture of the both, mm-hmm. or some teams are just really young. Um, but with this particular team, I'm like, I just, 
they're not getting any better. And yeah, they got Eric Carlson, but it's just like, well, is he really, it got you thinking or it got you to realize, you know, he did as well as he did because he was with the Sharks. They weren't Mm -hmm. doing well. So he was the one racking up the points where you put him in this, in this team. It's like, oh, it's a more competitive team. He's not scoring that well. He's not that Norris caliber player that they, Mm -hmm we're hoping to acquire and I just feel like with the Penguins don't hate me Penguins fans because I don't hate you guys but I just feel like that's the end of an era there Mm -hmm. yes they have to hear the hard truth a little tough love from Alma and Ray Ray (laughs) uh, for Penguins fans that it's time to start mentally preparing yourself for a new uh decade generation of players. I went through it. We all go, we can all go through it. I watched my team get dismantled and my heart broken and be depressed. And, you know, maybe you'll get a first round draft pick one day and (laughs) be able to just, you know, be as lucky as we were with those lottery balls um, for the Blackhawks. But (laughs) people are screaming at me. That was rigged, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Carol, anyway, Carolina also got Evgeny Kuznetsov of the Caps. Um, that was an interesting uh, situation with the Caps because just a couple weeks before when Kuznetsov returned from player assistance and all that stuff, they put him back down into the minors. They said it was for potential trade things. Um, and so we got to see that play out. And I mean, both of them are Stanley Cup champions. So I think those were good moves for Carolina to add some of that to their mix because they are, you know, really shaping up to be a solid contender. Hopefully maybe that uh, leadership will really help drive them further into the playoffs. Colorado made lots of moves. Um, They're not messing around this year, really trying to make a strong push. Um, The Blackhawks did nothing except get eliminated (laughs) from the playoffs. Um, Trade deadline comes and Chicago is (laughs) the first team eliminated from the playoffs, which, look, it is what it is. But then we totally whipped uh, Arizona's ass the following night. So that made me feel better. (laughs) I was like, how did we end up last and not Arizona? But we we kicked their butt and it just made me feel a lot better. Did you have any other thoughts about uh, the other teams that uh, I rattled off there? Well, Edmonton got better too. I yeah. I really thought, um, what is it? I really thought Henrique was going to go to the Rangers because I know that was the talk with Vetrano and Henrique going over there, but you know, didn't work out that way. Edmonton just got better, and that's been our bump in the playoffs. So we'll see how that works out, but. You know what? I'm happy for Carolina. They're one of the they're they're fun to watch. They've been fun to watch um mm-hmm. for years. I'm a fan of the Storm Surge. That's always mm-hmm. fun. I love fun in hockey. But you know what? Good for Kuznetsov. I know we talked about him last week and we were like, you know what? We really hope for the best. And for players like this, maybe a change of scenery is good. I was mm-hmm. listening to um you know, to uh, reporters say that um, before the trade was made that they talked to a lot of the teammates that had played with him, know, knew about him, and they said that he was a great um, locker room guy, so that that might have shifted the decision to acquiring him, and good for him. I always say a lot of the time with these players, sometimes the change of scenery is what is what they need, and I, I hope for the best. Yes, I do too. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, weird move. (laughs) Pat Maroon went to Boston. That was like, that seemed really sort of strange to me. Um, Olmark stayed in Boston. Thank to the goalie gods because that (laughs) duo of those two is like, it cannot be broken. It will be heartbreaking (laughs) to see those two buddies, the two um, tandem goalies go. Um, The other weird trade deadline thing that happened was um, Bo Byram, had to go to the rink on game day to get his stuff because he got traded. And like, how horrible (laughs) would that be? I could not imagine the emotions these guys have to go through. 
let alone having to like go to the rink on a game date and go get your stuff and then like leave and get on a plane and like go somewhere else. I can't, like, I don't even know how you wrap your head around that. I don't think you do. I think you put it mm -hmm. on a shelf and compartmentalize it and deal with it in the off season. Yeah. Like I feel like I get it, you know, trade the lines. People are making calls even during games, but I feel like there's gotta be something's got to give we got to yeah. stop with the trading if you know in the middle of the games where you see the guy leave the bench we we can't do that like no. i get it yes they're players but at the end of the day they're not little chess pieces we can just move whenever we want to there's got to be at least you know it's got to be before the game after a game not on a game day because watching that video i just felt so bad for him i wanted to give him a hug he's just walking in all awkward like oh crap here i go gonna get my stuff it's so sad yeah and it's i saw a comment in one of the posts on social that was like um hey, yeah but we're gonna uh need that bag back though like did you, <laughs> that plant actually belongs to the office like you know <laughs> Could you imagine so if they sad. could you imagine if they like made him put it in a trash bag? Get out of here. This is the NHL. Quit that. <laughs> um it was a wild week. Any other final thoughts on trade deadline things before we move into the PWHL? No, that was a lot for a trade deadline <laughs> going into the week yeah. that was kind of slow. It picked up so much towards the end of it, really towards the end of it, that I feel like this was one of the more interesting deadlines because I kept mm -hmm. refreshing to see what was going on. And it was something new every like other hour. So it was, it was fun to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> it was very entertaining. It made for an entertaining week. All right. Over in the PWHL, before I dive into my game experience, Two awesome things of note. Uh, USA Hockey is releasing and already has started releasing a six episode docuseries on the U.S. women's national team as they prepare for the IIHF Women's World Championship happening this year um, in a couple in like a month or so. So it premiered on the NHL Network, which ugh, it's like. Oh, it's like so few people can actually watch the NHL network or like have cable to watch it, but whatever. Nonetheless, this is great. Um, definitely figure out if you can watch it or can catch up with it or borrow someone's like cable access, like cable login. Um, this is super exciting and important to, to witness because this is happening at the same time where the PWHL is going on, where a lot of these women are now playing each other in regular season in the PWHL against each other, like on different teams. Um, and, but then they also have to get ready to go to worlds together, which that's a whole other element of the women's game that I want to talk about. Um, other quick headline, Kendall Coyne Schofield. She is like the lead character, human character in Disney and Pixar's new movie inside out Two. If you have kids or like, even if you don't like, this is incredible. She's playing like the female hockey player who's like the human in the in the movie and there's all these like it's it's incredible. Like this is so huge and so important for women's hockey to see for young kids a char an animated character that's a female hockey player and like it's Kendall Coyne Schofield voicing it. Like, I love that Disney did this and like got her to do this and got her and just, I feel like we need more publicity around this. And like, I really hope she can go to like the red carpet premiere and do interviews. And like, this is like needs to be like huge. Isn't that exciting? Yes. That's so cute. Oh, I love, oh, I love that because I mean, growing up, what did we have? Just the mighty ducks. <laughs> And it, you I know, had and the yeah. Little Mermaid and Cinderella when I was like a little kid. I don't even I didn't have Mighty Ducks until I was older. You know, like all I have to be aspire to be is a mermaid. You know, like come on, this is great. <laughs> no, this is so cute. Like I can't wait to see it. And like you said, I really hope that they do let the NHL kind of capitalizes on that and does some stuff with her or some promotion with um mm -hmm. within the organization. That'll be so cool. I can't wait to see. Can I spill all about my experience? Yes, I've been waiting for this. Please. Okay. Do. <laughs> I went to my first PWHL hockey game 
in Boston, outside of Boston, in Lowell, Massachusetts, they played the New York team. Um, I have so many thoughts, so you ha- you're going to have to ask me questions. <laughs> All right. So how is the atmosphere? It was different than an NHL game. They have music. They have mm-hmm. a Jumbotron. They have an in arena host. They do like trivia. And during the intermissions, they do little, um, like little kids play the hockey, uh, mm-hmm. which is super entertaining. I think the biggest thing missing is the team name. And I think once they have team names, the ability for the fans to really attach to something and identify with something is going to make a big difference because the chants were just like, let's go Boston. And it just Mm. didn't hit and it didn't feel like you didn't feel it in your gut of like, you're really connected and want them to win. I mean, they wanted them to win, of course, but like it was just different. Also the merchandise, because the fans have such a limited option of like gear to wear, everybody in the arena is not decked out like we are at NHL games. And they, they were selling, I sent all my video because of course <laughs> I went to check out the merch situation. So they do sell merch in Boston. They have a whole table set up and they have a lot of the line change stuff, which is like the very like hip modern gear, which I'm a, a fan of. I have that for my Blackhawks, but that's because I also wanted alternate stuff to wear. I think at this point, we really just need like the main logos to wear, right? To like rep the team. Um, so I sent her a video of the options and there was very <laughs> limited, but I was like in line and I kept like panicking because like I didn't know what to do. I was like getting closer to the front and like I was trying to talk to the people. And I was like, I'm just like, I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing. I just go ahead of me. I have to get out of line. I just like need a minute to think it's too overwhelming. I don't know what I want to get. Um, so I didn't end up getting anything because I want to see how it plays out um, in the future. Okay. Ask me more questions. But tell everybody, because I got so excited because I told Ray, I said, if you see anything that says inaugural season or anything, that's a go-to. You have to buy the merch. She's right. It was very underwhelming. She sent me the picture and I was like, it just, it doesn't do it for me. But she got a puck, a puck. Tell us how you got the puck. Finally. I I got a puck. (laughs) I got an inaugural season puck because I went for warmies like I always do. Alma, it was amazing. So I went down, I'm standing up against the glass on the Boston side. There's a row of like six kids to the right of me. And then to the left of me, there's like one little kid with a sign over. And I'm like, I didn't make a sign. I was just like trying to just take it all in. And the kids in front of me, uh, they were throwing the kids pucks and they got a couple and then one came over and I, it came right at me, Alma. And I went and I reached and I caught it and I was like, this is my moment. This is my moment to keep a puck finally. And then I was like, all of these children are now looking at me because this puck was for them. And I'm standing here like a psycho by myself. I better give these kids this puck. So I gave the kids the puck and the mom came over and she was like, thank you so much. And I was like, Yes, that was the right thing to do. I was like, it was not intended for me. I have to give them this puck or else I'm going to get kicked the fuck out of this arena. I was like, I have to give them this. So I'm standing there watching. It's all great. Now the little girl on the left, she gets a puck. Everything is great. We're down to 30 seconds left in warmups. Another player from Boston comes over to give that little girl a puck. Doesn't realize she's already got one. I'm like, this is my chance. This is how I'm going to get a puck. So the girl gets a second puck and I beeline to her and I go, hey, since you already have a puck, I would be happy to take that one from you. And the mom was like, oh, oh, okay. And she gave it, I was like, thank you. And then I just stood there and I walked away and I got my puck. Oh my gosh. That's the best souvenir. But look, Anybody that doesn't listen to the podcast, you go with the first story. You say, I caught it and it was my moment. Right. And that was it. That's it. We don't lie to your podcast people, but to everybody else, you caught it. 
And that was the perfect moment. (laughs) It did. I was like, it was like, I heard the choir of angels singing and the light. And I was like, it's for me. Oh my God. And then I, I was like, I looked up and all these kids are just staring at me like, are you going to give me a puck? Like, what is this lady going to do? You know, like by myself with no, you know, it's like no sign, nothing, you know, like, all right, I got it. I got to give them this. So See, you're going to get, out. you're going to get good karma because you did, you did something nice. You see? Exactly. That was my thought. <laughs> and then it happened. <laughs> like Yay! what psycho adult is like asking a child who has two pucks. I'm like, um, since you already have one, I'll take that second one from you. And then I was like, <laughs> smile real big, Rachel, because you don't want to scare them. <laughs> No, I love that. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's perfect. That's honestly yes. the perfect souvenir. It has everything you'd want in a souvenir. It is awesome. Yep. It's inaugural <laughs> season. It's got the date. It's an official puck. It's got the, it was per, it was like perfect. So I didn't need to buy anything, but yeah. So I got oh, my puck. So it was, it was incredible. And then my seats. So it's like a four ish thousand arena. And um, mm-hmm. so there's no bad seat in the house, but I ended up accidentally buying a ticket in the friends and family section. Which oh, I, nice. How, <laughs> like, why are they selling those anyway? But whatever. So <laughs> I am sitting there and the, the woman next to me, we started chatting and she ended up being the fiance of one of the players on the Boston team. So I asked her a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> and then Hillary Knight's girlfriend, I don't know if they're engaged or not, but her girlfriend was sitting like at the end of the row by me. And I was like, Oh my God, that's so cool. Should I go talk to her? <laughs> Should I go be like, congratulations, you're breaking records in the Olympics. Like you're super amazing. But also like, <laughs> we really love your girlfriend and like, she's incredible. Um, just so you know, (laughs) what do I say to this? What do I say to her? Um, so I chose not to do that. Um, and just let her be her supportive girlfriend and like watch Hillary play. But, uh, so I talked to the girl next to me. What's really interesting is that the players, a a lot of them are are parents and have kids and the kids travel with them. Oh my gosh power of a woman (laughs) right i'm like wait a minute what do you mean she's like yeah they like stay in the hotel with them and then they have to go out and play and like that's what they're doing and i was like that's unreal isn't that unbelievable that i'm oh my gosh they have as it is i feel like um having kids it's gotta be it's a what is it it's a uh, not that it's a job. I have to be careful what I say, but you're with them 24 yeah. seven. Right. And it's very different from the dad. I feel like a kid, especially, you know, a young, a young kid, they're more attached to their mom or that, you know, they're because they're maternal, but oh my gosh, to have to be mom, to have to like, what did we just say last week that we are just in shock of these guys and that tight schedule that they're on <laughs> now, these women, I'm assuming they must be on a tight schedule. Mm-hmm because of the hockey and then you add being a full-time parent to that i am just with m- more power to them and i am just in complete like i'm at a loss for words that is i know crazy i know like on the bus up here one of the new york moms on the team like the player has the kids on the bus like coming up because they they bus from new york to boston because it's not that far mm-hmm. like what Uh, But also, like, that's kind of incredible. But also at the same time, like, oh, oh, yeah, Brent Burns is going to take care of his five kids or how many he has on the the team plane with his, like, survival kit backpack and, like, all the (laughs) – yeah, right. Like, the the end – like, yeah, okay, sure. Not that he couldn't do it, but, like – that is amazing. I am mind blown, and I'm even more – more like oh my gosh these women are so awesome that is crazy they're unbelievable what they can do and that's the other like so women's hockey is not men's hockey it's not they play the same sport but they have different roles they the way that the professional women's game is played is so different on so many levels 
that doesn't mean it's not exciting and incredible and worthy of what it is because it is. They play with each other and have more experience playing again, like with the person, their, their opponent, than they do their own teammates. Like because of the, the IIHF games and the world championships and like team USA and team Canada. And now like, so your teammates one day and now your enemies the next day playing in the PWHL. So like these people know each other, like spend a lot of time together and now they're playing in this professional environment and this is such a unique experience that we are not going to see forever when this league is successful long term that's no longer going to be the case right like we're going to have hopefully more teams and more people coming up from college and going right into the pwhl and you know having these different experiences it's it's such a unique way to play plus the other thing that's different is they don't f- hit on the boards, right? Like they, oh. like when they're up against the boards going after a puck, you, there's hesit, like there's, sometimes they do and the, the league does allow it to a degree, but it's not nearly as common as when we watch NHL. Like anytime there's a player on the boards, there's another guy coming up and just slamming right into him, you know, and like the hits, right? And the checking and all that, which is allowed in the NHL. But it allows for a different kind of play where you get to really be like strategic and it's less about just the physical element of it and more about like being strategic with the play and like getting the puck where it needs to be. It's it's different and it's okay that it's different. It's not a bad thing. So that was like my biggest aha moment was like, and they're, and they're like full-time moms and (laughs) full-time athletes and they're living in different cities for parts of the year and they're traveling and everything is being thrown together. And now they have the IHF world championship happening this season on top of everything. And like, and then meanwhile, Kendall Coyne is off fucking (laughs) being the voice of a Disney Pixar movie. And she's got like a nine month old son that she's toting around to the rink. And like, she's got a husband and all this stuff. And like, these women are just unbelievable. And, and that's not to also discredit the wives and girlfriends of, the NHL players, because they are just as crucial and important to the success of those players. They're just not on the road with them. You know, a lot of them aren't. And, and I, I, it's just, it was such a unique experience. I highly recommend if you can go to a PWHL game, go, they're going to be on the road in Detroit. They're doing a series. They're doing one in Pittsburgh, plus the regular teams where they play, um, Give them the support because they need it and they are badass and it is incredible to watch them play. That's so awesome because that's not, I feel like that's something that should be talked about a little bit more where it's like somebody needs to, well, maybe we'll see it in the, um, you know, in the docuseries, you know, prepping for the IAHF. But I think this is Mm -hmm. what's going to make this inaugural season even more special because like you said, with the growth of the league, if we are going to get more teams and all this kind of stuff, I think they're going to end up putting, they're going to end up, you know, maybe finding ways for it. Yeah, they'll be full-time parents, but maybe they'll be a little bit more stricter when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I think that's what makes it, is going to make and make, continues to make this season even more special. Like, that's so crazy still to me like I'm still at a loss for words like I can barely like manage to have a full-time job make time for the gym make time for myself and these women are full-time mothers that is amazing I really do hope that this ends up growing and turning into something so awesome because women deserve it like from college to you know all these women playing all over the world like they deserve to showcase their talents you know on national television. So I hope that it gets um, a lot more growth and a lot more, and and it's um, televised like nationwide where it's like, I don't have to be on YouTube waiting to see if it buffers. I hope they get traction where we're paying. Yeah, I'll pay for a channel to show me all the games like I do for the NHL. If I do it for the guys, I'm gonna do it for the girls. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I had a lot to get out. But there was like so much. No, 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 it's awesome to experience there. And I mean, I was entertained. I love hockey, no matter how, I mean, and it's still physical. There was two penalties for roughing 
because there was a nasty hit. Hillary and I did not like it, went right up and like they were pushing and shoving and like there's still like competition and and the energy that you want and the rivalry and you know, it is a little bit different, but it doesn't mean it's still not great. And to watch professional athletes play at their top caliber is it was it was an honor to be able to experience that, um, and not just because they they gave me a puck, but um, <laughs> it took a woman to give me a puck. You know what? Are you, what am I going to say? Of course it did because we're the best. No, um, no, I I love that, and I love that you got to experience like all of that because again, like I said, we would not have known because they don't they don't tell us this kind of yeah. stuff, or it's very different to hear it from a fan. And I feel like mm -hmm. that's where um, a lot of the content creation lacks, where it's like, I yeah. rather hear it from a fan's point of view rather than somebody just randomly behind a camera that's hired by the team. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to do more for them. I feel like there's so much more we could do to highlight the uniqueness of it and use that as an asset um, and put that kind of content out because like, we're getting walk-in. Oh, that was the other thing I asked um, Whitney, who was the fiance I was sitting next to. I was like, okay, does your fiance like stress about walk-in outfits? And she's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Which is so funny, which I didn't realize until I got home. I went, that's such a woman thing. There's another difference. Like only <laughs> we would be stressing about what we're wearing. The guys, they like, they're like, whatever. I'm just going to wear a suit that I think's cool and like get this custom jacket and like, I'm good. No, like the women are like stressing about what they're wearing for their walk-in videos. You know, I will, some of them, maybe not all of them. Like some of them probably live for it and are like, Oh, I put this sick outfit together and you know, whatever. Um, which I think is just another element that like, like show me that, like mm -hmm. we want the humanness, the human story, the human element. I, I think pretending that they're something that they're not is, is going to be a problem if, you know, if it continues that way, I think this is an opportunity to showcase them for their uniqueness and um, use that. Yeah. Like badasses on the ice and stylish icons off the ice. <laughs> right. And then like raising incredible humans to be in this world. <laughs> like, okay, sign me up, Give, take all my money. I'm ready. Um, so yeah. So that was the, like the gist, the gist of the experience. Um, any other questions for me about it? No, I think you gave us like the perfect insight. Like I would have never, I would have never known all of that if you don't tell me it. Like it yeah. makes me even more excited to watch it. I really wish they would um, showcase more of the of them getting to the arena or even their spouses with the kids. Like, I want to see the kids getting to the arena. I would Same. pay for that. <laughs> I know. The other super notable thing, and then we will wrap this up because I blabbered on a lot because I just <laughs> no, had a lot to okay. say. Um, the Anaheim Ducks did a collaboration with Vans Shoes. Did you see this? Yes, I... I was so close to buying some and I could not bring myself to do it because I own, I own merchandise of all teams across the NHL. I have duck stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm staring at my ducks Jersey and sharks jacket, but I just, <laughs> I was like, I just, I love them. They're awesome. But realistically, where would I wear them? I wouldn't wear them. They would just be there to be there. But my goodness, they did such a great job on every single one of the pairs. They're different because, you know, you know, other other brands, it's like, oh, we're going to bring out this shoe and we're going to have three different colors. But it's the same design, same shoe. No, if you guys have not seen it, it's three pairs. Each pair yeah. is different. And I feel like it's there's a pair for everybody. Like the low top mm -hmm. had the checkers with the old duck logo and it's white and orange where they had, what was it? The eggplant color. And that mm -hmm. one was awesome in its own. And then they had just the classic black one with the hockey stick going down as the Vans logo. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So cool. I wish more. And I get it. The connection with Vans and, um, and, and, and the city of Anaheim and the Ducks. So I totally get it. But I am hating and I really wish they would have done a collection for every single team in the NHL because that would have been awesome. 
that would have been sick. I would have bought a pair and I'm not even a Vans girly. Like <laughs> I w- would have had to have like that. I would have bought though, if it was like my team, of course, I think they, it was the perfect collaboration. Like that vibe Anaheim is so that vibe, the like van surfer skateboarder that's totally in line with the fan base. And even if you're not into that, like if you knew, like I just said, like I would buy it if it was a Blackhawks shoe, like, because like, that's Mm -hmm. so sick. And I could finally have like really cool sneakers to wear that were like embedded with my team, you know, like, but do you remember (laughs) maybe like, I don't know seven years ago maybe 10 years ago there was like a big push with like those high heels like like platform stilettos with team logos embedded on them like let like you could get them on like etsy or something yeah they had the logo in the front right (laughs) yeah maybe it wasn't hockey but it was like like they were there were they were being all around my pinterest feed um and i was like (laughs) That's cool, but I am not the girl who wears high heels to a hockey game, um, but that's just me. Um, I know lots of girls do, and Christy, who is a friend of this podcast, does, and I love her for it, um, and sh- that's totally her vibe. I just, like, I cannot do it. I'm too afraid I'm going to fall down. So Yeah, I I can't. Like, the most I do is, like, my little three-inch heel with my, uh, what is it, my little three-inch heel? Diamond crested. They're little compared to other ones. I can just, that's as high as I will go. And that's because it's my little shiny boots and they have a three inch heel, but that's as far as I'll go. I don't know if I can maneuver wearing high heels, maybe having a couple of drinks. Not all these arenas have a rail. So I've mastered being able to walk in the boots with two drinks in my hand. Even the purse, I have a cross body, free hands. Yeah. That's as far as I'm going. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, simplify it. But anyway, that was super cool. Um, hunk of the week. Who is your hunk of the week? (sighs) I'm gonna go with Adrian Kempe. He just came back from an injury. It's very hard for me not to say Timo Meyer since he just had a hat trick and I'm so happy for him, but I chose him last week. So this week I'm gonna go with Adrian Kempe. He's back from injury and I really hope that that's the spark the team needs to kind of get things going because we need wins to keep uh, our playoff hopes alive. <laughs> yes. Mine is John Tortorella because he was <laughs> <laughs> he was in full torts mode this weekend, was unhappy he got kicked out of the game. He was arguing with, I think it was Wes McCauley, and Macaulay's like, you got to go. And he's like, I'm not going. And so he's like, I'm staying. I'm not leaving. Um, and the best part is the owners of the Flyers were like, <laughs> we're going to pay those fines. Don't you worry. Tort. We're all, we're behind you. Like, that's no mind. We support you. And that's what I love to see. Like, when you have an organization and ownership and everybody that supports your coach, like, yeah, he was like, being torts and arguing and yelling and like disagreeing. And like, that's what you want from a coach too, though. Like as a player, you sometimes really want your coach to advocate for you and stick up for you if that's, you know, how you feel. But I love him and I'm sad he got like, he didn't really need this suspension right now because they are like doing well. That was like not the best timing, but like, (laughs) it's okay. I think everybody is going to be okay. He did you know he does a podcast every week? Really? Does. I didn't know. I didn't know either. I don't remember how I'm gonna I start found listening. It. I'm gonna start Ho- listening. <laughs> right? I should get paid to promote it. Hockey and <laughs> Hounds. Um, they do it once a week. They talk a little bit about the things going on in in the league. It's like 20 minutes long, but then they promote Tortorell is a huge advocate of like rescuing animals, loves dogs. And then they promote a dog that's up for adoption in Philadelphia. How did we not know. know this? Oh my gosh. I know. I'm like, I'm <gasps> obsessed. Oh, I saw it because there was a video of torts at the animal shelter, like doing like the, one of the dogs that they promoted on the show got adopted and they like surprised him and told him, and he was like smiling so big and was like so happy. And I was like, what is this? What is this? 
hockey and hounds like i need to start listening and it's great because he actually shares a lot like more so than in a lot of those press conferences so um because there's it's for the dogs you know we have to listen to it and we'll do a recap on our uh text messaging <laughs> so we can talk yeah. about it i'm i'm so for it and you know what i love the passion behind those vocal coaches i've always said I love to see a captain be very vocal out on the ice mm -hmm. and stick up for their guys and a coach that's just like that. It's even better. And if it's, you can't hate towards, I love it. When I saw the video, I totally thought of you and I was like, Oh, my God. I was like, he's like, I'm not no. going. I'm not, I'm not, going. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Like what? What? I <laughs> was, loved it. Oh, it was, it's going to go in the highlight reel of my memories of Tortorella. Mine too. <laughs> Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week.